Mr. Tim. Yes. Okay, so this, this is a video that I'm going to put up ahead of what I've done, and then I'll explain what I did as I go through it, because there's a lot of minutes of footage for this particular procedure. Um, as you know, my video, I'm um, Stupid I Fail, which is doing quite well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I didn't realize people were so interested in me being, doing something stupid, but it happens. Uh, but anyways, uh, I, I got uh, some feedback from a few people to purchase a vulcanizing machine, which I will show you here in a second, because it's actually doing the job that it's supposed to. Uh, and I also got some people saying, hey, uh, you can have your tire vulcanized at a vulcanizing shop. So I weighed the options. If This is like a... Uh, give a man a fish and he eats for a day, teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime kind of a thing. Um, if I had this tire vulcanized, I called up and the price to have it done was $450. $450 to vulcanize a tire and it would take me basically two days of travel. A day, drop it off, a day to go pick it up because it's two hours each way. That's two hours out, an hour there, blah, blah, blah. you got to eat your lunch. you got to do all the things you're going to do unless you, you know, pack your own lunch, which I do from time to time. But anyway, uh, it just seemed like two days lost and $450. I'm looking at somewhere around $700 or $800. Or I just buy the vulcanizing machine for a cool, with all the bits and pieces that I have, for about $550. Um, I've already fixed one tire as the test. A uh, few months, actually about last summer, I hit the bridge down here in Frenchtown and uh, tore the sidewall out of my 550's outer tire. And I've actually successfully fixed the tire. Sidewall cut, by the way. And uh, I didn't do the greatest job because the tire is quite small. It's a 19.5 tire, but the sidewall is very hard to get this big machine in. And you'll see how big it is in a second. Um, but... I learned a lot, and the best teacher that I've had so far is YouTube. Believe it or not, if you want to learn how to vulcanize your own tires, um, YouTube is the best learning tool that I've found so far. Now, I'm going to flip my camera around here. I'm going to show you how simple this is. And those of you that are on uh, Instagram, you will have already seen that I'm doing this job already. So, but anyways, uh, what it is is heat and pressure is the vulcanizing process. There's a whole lot of other things that go on in order to get to this point where you see this big C clamp with two very hot heating elements um, working diligently there. I hope he doesn't pull that thing in here. Please don't pull that thing in here. Yes. Is it smoking? It's not smoking. Okay, that's a whole nother video. Okay, so back to this uh, video here. Um, yeah, I was talking about this thing. Uh, the vulcanizing process is heat and compression, which is this thing here, and it's working quite well. Uh, YouTube is the way that you learn how to do this because the instructions that they sent with that thing is useless. Now, anybody can do this job, right, Tim? Yeah. I think it was pretty simple, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It just takes some patience. Uh, you got to have some specialty tools like this guy here because you're going to have to grind stuff out. Um, you're going to have to have something that resembles this. This is a tire regroover. Um, that's how I cut the, uh, and you'll see that in the video. That's how I cut the sidewall out of it. And uh, yeah, just uh, if you've got a tractor tire that you're going to have to spend $1,300 on, it's probably cheaper to buy that thing at $550 for the whole entire setup and I mean I bought I bought patches I bought a lot of patches actually where's the other patches I got patches everywhere here's patches these patches I bought this scraper I bought uh, this liquid solution that's actually liquid rubber I bought uh, 15 five pounds of cushion gum sidewall cushion gum I bought all different things and that machine also comes with different heat plates for exterior and interior uh, interior uh, 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 
you know, applications. If you're only going to be doing the outside or the inside, you can use these bean bags, which will, you know, so if you're only going to be heating the outside for, you know, uh, for an outer repair without repairing cord, you can put this on the inside and that'll just retain the heat and everything that you need. Uh, yeah, so watch the video and you will see what it takes to get that tire prepped and ready to go. It ain't the greatest, but it is what it is because I was here with a bunch of people doing a bunch of different things and it just needed to get, uh, uh, it was just dirty editing. So anyways, enjoy. If not, well, tomorrow I will take that thing off of there and I will film it and you can see what it looks like when you're done, when I'm done. And it will, it will be perfect, I guarantee it, because you know what? I'm pretty confident that I, I, I can get it done and it's going to work out great and it's going to look good on the tractor just like it did when it was brandy freaking new okay so i've already taken my heating iron and i've cut it out now you'll see me grab it again one more time but that is a tire retreading tool uh, i don't have the proper uh, gizmo to actually remove the rubber from the sidewall it's like this drum thing that goes on the uh, the grinder or the buffer the uh, yeah, you'll see me with the uh, little heat tire regroover gizmo there on the inside. I had to figure out how I was going to get the patches off that I had put on the inside of the tire. And believe me, it was quite difficult. I have that scraper that's there on my right hand side next to that pair of gloves. Uh, that's actually a sharpened tool and I tried to cut the... I tried to cut the uh, uh, the patch off and I don't know what I was looking on at on the internet. I was I don't even remember what the hell I was doing. But anyways, it doesn't even matter. Uh, I've got the, the buffer grinder gizmo there, and I'm actually grinding the patches out of the, uh, out of the uh, inside of the tire. And now I'm using that liquid buffer and the scraper, and I'm cleaning and scraping. I've ground down pretty much to the first set of cords on the inside of the tire uh, where I will lay the patch. And you can see that... Um, working with tire patches there and I cleaned the top of the patch off and now I'm putting that uh, liquid uh, adhesive it's actually a virgin rubber in a suspension of very volatile stuff <coughs> anyway so now uh, I go ahead and I put the patches in there and this is very high speed um, but I put the patches in the first patch in and then I cleaned the outer patch and then I put that uh, liquid gum back on top of the patch that I already had in and sealed it in. And then I put the larger, uh, what is that, a two and a half by four inch patch I put in there. And now I'm making a cushion gum uh, cover that goes over top of those two patches that have pretty much just replaced the, uh, the, uh, the cordage inside the tire. Now you see me prepping the area that has been buffed and cleaned out and uh, I'm using that liquefied uh, um, yeah, raw virgin rubber and what that is doing is, is, is drying up in there and I'm, making, I'm cutting a piece of uh, cushion gum to go actually in the slot. Now what you have to do is once that dries down and obviously it's dry um, once it's dry you take a poker gizmo I used a pointed a narrow uh, flat headed screwdriver and I pushed it in there so it would adhere to the patch that I have on the inside of the tire and of course you have to get all the air out of it so you will see me run with the roller uh, uh, maybe you won't I know I poked a couple holes in it with the uh, with my pair of scissors. Now you'll see me with the roller. Uh, and I roll it and I hold on the inside and I put the new piece of cushion gum on top of it and you really have to work this stuff in there. Um, it takes some heat, that's why the shop heater is on there. Uh, they don't want you to do anything with the tire unless it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit uh, outside. So I had to warm up the carcass of the tire in order to get this cushion gum to move around and spread out and now basically all I'm doing is uh, layering this sidewall cushion gum that I bought in a one and a half inch wide roll and you layer it on 
you roll it in, being very clean about what you do. Uh, you see that dirt on my hands is not actually dirt, it's actually that liquefied gum that I use as an adhesive and that is a heat cure. The patches that I use, they're also a dual cure whether it be cold vulcanizing with the rubber cement or the heat cure like um, you know I'm about to do or I have been in the process of doing. So uh, you go ahead and you, you just keep layering it until you are at the point where your tire is all built back up again. So when I put air to this thing, in theory, uh, my, not in theory, but in practice, the, uh, the two patches that I put on the inside of the tire uh, should be fully cured and the gum that I'm putting on the outside of the tire will keep the tire from bulging out. I have basically done what you call a section repair to the tire. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, it's really a, uh, a, a simple process, but it is time consuming. I have several hours of footage, uh, of course, there's a lot of missed footage because the battery on my camera went dead, but uh, there's several hours of work that is involved in repairing this tire. And as you can see, that is going to be the final coat because I cut an extra long piece that will cover all the little stitches that I put in there. Now, you're probably going to see this next move is going to be putting a piece of aluminum foil or aluminum foil over the top and I've already got a piece under the bottom side of it and what the aluminum foil does, there you go, uh, what the aluminum foil does is makes a barrier uh, between, you can use cellophane or you can use aluminum foil but it makes a barrier uh, for the heat pads so that they do not and I'm choosing the proper uh, heat uh, you know transfer pads that have the right curves and all that stuff Okay, so as you see, I had, uh, I had to edit some here. Um, I've chosen the right plates, and I've put the thing on there, and i got to clamp it because you got to make sure that there's no air in there, which I've already done removing it with the, uh, the roller and my pair of scissors. What you do is you poke holes under the cushion gum, and then you roll it again, and that gets the air out of the uh, cushion gum. They do have a, what they call a porcupine roller, which I for some reason didn't buy it, um, but I'll, I'll get to it. Um, I had to loosen it back up again because I wasn't happy with the way that it had uh, set on the inside of the tire, so I had to reposition that. Um, but anyways, it's basically a waiting game from this point forward. You need uh, 20 minutes per millimeter of thickness in the on the tire. Now I've got somewhere around 15 millimeters of thickness on this tire. 15 to 18 so 15 I'd say 15 comfortably 15 so what I had to do was 15 minutes or 15 millimeters 20 minutes per millimeter and 20 minutes for the warm-up process so 2 times 15 is 300 minutes 320 minutes of time that's what it would take to do the cure on this tire so Anyway, uh, tomorrow's video is me taking this thing off, so thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Check out Patreon. Uh, any little bit helps to uh, curb production costs. And uh, right now, the One Lonely Farmer web store is being revamped and ready to go uh, with all new clothing lines. So check that out also. Thanks again.